Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. Recently I used the 5D Classic for some landscape photography. In the past I've used the 5D for mostly portrait photography and I've shot a few weddings on it, but for portrait photography the 5D Classic has among the best rendering that you can get from a digital camera. It produces excellent skin tones and just overall a really pleasing image. The 5D Classic on paper doesn't really lend itself very well to landscape photography. I mean, it's got a very limited dynamic range, it's got no live view features, it has a small LCD screen on the back that's hard to see, and in addition to that it's only got 12 megapixels. It's hardly much of an endorsement for it as a landscape photography camera. In this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what it was like using the 5D Classic for landscape photography and we'll look at some of those potential issues with it. So let's first look at dynamic range. With only 11 stops of dynamic range it's fair to say that the 5D Classic doesn't really lend itself very well to landscapes but the reality is it doesn't have to matter that much about the dynamic range being limited. Depends what time of day that you shoot at but for the times of day that I like to shoot at which is around twilight I like the actually really like the time between golden hour and blue hour. The sun's really low in the sky, and when the sun's lower in the sky, the dynamic range is lower in the scene in general. Having said that, it's easy to get beyond the range of the 5D Classic, and I often bracket my exposures just for safety's sake. That's not to say that I always need that dynamic range, it's just that it is a one-off event always, isn't it, landscape? The atmosphere that you have at that moment is always unique, and to just be able to say that you can go back and do it isn't always that possible because by the time you've gone home you're probably a long way away from that location. So I often end up bracketing my exposures just to be safe. The real downside if you don't have enough dynamic range is just that you're going to get areas that are white and black in your photograph where you're not going to get any detail. It's literally just goes plain white and plain black and it doesn't really give you a very good look especially for landscape photos. But I've been finding that I'm good most of the time with just that one exposure. If you photograph more in the middle of the day or at times when the sun's high and bright you're probably going to want to bracket or maybe look at a different camera. In this picture that I'm showing you now the dynamic range was so low that I had space to spare on both sides of the histogram. So it shows it's not always the case that it's very high dynamic range when you're doing landscapes. If you want to see a behind the scenes video for that photograph, I'll put the link in the description for you. Now when it came to framing my photos, that's where I think we start to hit some of the real limitations of the 5D Classic. It's just much harder to get your framing right compared to say a 5D Mark II or a 60 Mark I or whatever. Now let me be clear, I still got the shot and it wasn't particularly hard to do it either, but that was partly due to the fact that I had the camera quite high on the tripod. But for photos that are at lower angles, this can become quite a problem. With landscapes, it's not always easy to get on the floor. They, it can be muddy, wet, there can be rocks in the way. It could just be stony, it, just difficult conditions overall. And then if you've got to try and get down low and then do that look through the viewfinder like this, when you're crawling on the floor or something, it just becomes difficult. And the overall experience, I think, doing landscapes with just the viewfinder is slightly frustrating. However, if you stick to more usual angles, keep the tripod fairly high, then you're probably not going to have that much of a problem. And I'd like to add, though, here that I don't wish that the 5D Classic had a live view screen. And there's a few reasons for this. The first reason that I don't want the 5D Classic to have a live view screen is that it would become more popular. And I don't like the idea of that. I like our little club as it is that not so many people know about this camera. It's just not on the radar for the majority of photographers. As soon as they find out there's no live view, it's ruled out. Secondly, I actually like the fact that it's hard to use. I don't use the 5D Classic because it's easy. I use it because of its simplicity and, and obviously because of its rendering. But the simplicity of the 5D Classic makes it have limitations. Limitations stimulate creativity and that leads to adaptations and development and you becoming a better photographer. Let's be clear, if you can take a good photo on a 5D Classic, no one's going to turn around and tell you you're only a good photographer because of your camera gear. But they should always say that because it is always the photographer. But you do definitely get the sense that when you take a good picture on the 5D Classic, you definitely earned it. And when it comes to megapixels, the 5D Classic only has 12. Well, it's nearly 13, but by today's standards, that's pretty low now. And if you've seen my other videos on the 5D Classic, and if you haven't seen my other videos on the 5D Classic, then I don't know what you've been doing. I definitely think you should watch them after this video. But when you watch them, you'll know that I'm not particularly bothered about low megapixel counts, and I don't see it as much of a restriction. Fact is, it is harder to print large prints when you have a low megapixel count, but you can still get by making large prints. I've printed six foot canvases, sold three of them for a high price. They were taken on 40D. 
that only had 10 megapixels. I upscaled those photos in Photoshop. Do you remember that old trick where it was 10% at a time? Maybe some of you remember that. But they sold for good money and you'll only see the reduced detail from low megapixel camera at closer viewing distances. You know, when you get close into it, you can see it then, but you don't miss what you didn't see. So I think that whilst you'll know that maybe there could have been more detail, people viewing it aren't really gonna care. And in the end, they're gonna say, either it's a good photo or it's not. Having more detail, does that really add to it? Maybe you think it does as a photographer, but I don't think anyone who's viewing it is really gonna care that much. So I just think it's overstated. I'm not saying it's not real, that obviously there's more detail when you have more megapixels, but I just feel like it's overstated to a degree. In the past, I compared my prints from 5DS with 50 megapixels and compared that to 5D Mark II, and yes, there's a difference. It's just not a difference that I care much about. I would say that in certain genres of photography, megapixels matter, and it's not, to me, in landscapes where you think it is. It's fashion and also commercial where they need to cut stuff out, but that's a different subject. So I guess the question is, do I recommend the 5D Classic for landscape photography? And the answer to that for me is gonna be no, because I think whilst you're getting a camera with a really good sensor with a 5D Classic, which has nice rendering, I think cameras that are newer than that, like the 60 Mark I, 5D Mark II, D800, D600, all those cameras are just going to be easier to use. And I think the main reason for me is just going to be that screen on the back having live view. For landscapes, that matters. I think it makes a real difference. I think the 5D Classic excels when it comes to doing portraiture where those issues go out the window and it just doesn't really matter anymore because you're working with the camera to your face and it's all fine. But if you've got a 5D Classic and that's all you got, I, especially if you shoot different genres, I wouldn't change. And if you're getting into landscapes and you've got it, just use it, just get out and use it and don't start thinking, well, you know, Martin said I need to have a larger screen. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying it's easier if you've got a larger screen with live view on it. But I'm not saying you can't get anything. You can still get exactly the same shots. Your work will look the same on every camera that you use in terms of your composition. Overall, I still think I'm gonna use the 5D Classic for landscapes. It is a different way of shooting, especially by today's standards, but I'm okay with that keeps you grounded. And I'd like to mention that I've had several people messaging me, asking me, is the 5D Classic a good camera for them to buy? Should they buy it? Just a very kind of generic question. And I would say that mostly it's a good camera to have in addition to something more modern, because a more modern camera is just going to make your life easier as a photographer. But the five people that buy the 5D Classic buy it for two reasons, the rendering and also just the nice kind of simplistic way of shooting with it. So it's definitely worth having, and it's a great camera for beginners to learn on because it's difficult to use. It's gonna ground you really well in those photography skills, but do it with a view to buy something else later on, but don't sell it to keep it. You will regret selling that camera if you sell it, keep the camera, because it's you, the photographer, that's growing. You don't outgrow camera gear, that's nonsense. It, we can say that when we say we need certain features to make our lives easier, that's fine. But you don't outgrow a camera, that's ridiculous. You, you, you're, you're a photographer and you're, you're getting better. We use whatever's in front of you. Consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description. Don't be shy. It really helps the channel out and it helps me keep making these kinds of videos as well. If you've got this far, maybe you'd like to consider subscribing and liking the video. If you want to find out more about the 5D Classic, you can watch this video here.